Okay, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to my video. I'm Stephen Conway, and I'm basically just teaching beginners about oil paints. Um, basic techniques, basic equipment, um, you know, a bit of everything. And this is really aimed at the beginners of oil painting. Um, I'm going to be just doing very simple paintings um, in these videos and I try and make it as easy as possible for you to follow me along if you want um, and I try and explain things as easily as I can okay <coughs> now I should just mention as well with the oil painting it can get quite smelly with the turpentine but you can buy low order turps um, there's very very little smell from it so it's safe enough to use indoors um, now I should also mention as well that you can actually buy oil paints which are water based um, you tint them with water but I don't know if they really caught on to be quite honest because you, the texture of the oil paints with the turps is just very it's very very difficult to mimic that I think um, I don't know anybody who has used the water based oils I haven't tried them myself, but um, it's up to yourself. Now, right, I have a little sketch here, just a small sketch of a robin. We're going to paint a robin today, okay? Um, we're going to be doing lovely warm colours. And basically, this exercise is really just to teach you about mixing colours on the canvas. You don't necessarily have to mix colours on your palette all of the time. You can just mix them on, on the canvas as you're going. Um, so let's crack on. Um, right, I have my palette over here. Now I'm going to turn the camera just slightly just to show you what setup I have, okay? Now, forgive me, I have my palette here with my turpentine and my tissue, okay? You can see the coffee there, wake me up. Now, I'm just going to zoom in here on this picture and I hope this turns out okay on this video. I'm just using my iPhone here. It's quite a good camera on it, so um, we'll plow on and see how we get on. Right, I'm just dipping into my top with my big brush, okay, my big green brush again, same as last time, and I'm going to dip into some white. Now make this nice and thin, okay? Like a nice thin cream out of a tub, a tub of cream. And then dip into some Naples yellow, equal amounts of each. So I want a very, very pale yellowy white, okay? And just go up here to the corner, we're going to have a lovely light coming down here from this corner, okay? So, let's just put this across here. You don't have to be too fussy about it. You can paint through your robin as well, if you like. Now take your time sketching this robin, okay? I've painted a lot of birds, so... I'd be quite used to sketching robins and finches and all that type of thing relatively quickly. But take your time. Um, if you have to, just pause the video and copy my drawing. Or you can go online and look at a couple of robins online. It's up to yourself. The internet is a fantastic place for finding all these types of pictures, you know. Uh, robins, looking landscapes and all sorts of beautiful paintings. So, with that done, I'm going to dip into my Naples yellow. And then I'm going to dip into cadmium red. A little bit of cadmium red. And I'm going to make a nice kind of a salmon, salmon type of a colour here. A nice warm salmon colour, okay? There we go. Now, I'm going to just clean my brush off a little bit. And I'm going to dip into my cadmium red. And a tiny bit of cobalt blue. Because what I want to do now is I want to transition this from this yellow into a pink into a blue okay so there we go nice little pink and just mix this into that yellow okay nice broad brush strokes and again you don't have to be too fussy you can put in different colors if you like it's up to yourself that's what i love about these types of paintings you can just play around with it and put in all different colors now i'm going to put a little bit of blue into that make it more bluey Okay, 
There we go. Now notice I'm not putting on a lot of paint, I'm just kind of scraping it onto the canvas. Just to get the canvas covered. That's all I'm doing. Alright. There we are. Now, I'm going to dip back into my blue again. No turpentine this time. Blue and red. And come in down here, nice purple, down at the end. Okay. Let's blend that in there. Now you can paint the whole painting in purple if you like, it's up to yourself. Uh, you can paint it whatever colour you like. And that's the beauty of painting. There are no rules. Do whatever. Whatever comes into your mind. Okay. There we go. Now, um, I'm going to dip into brown, right? A little bit of burnt umber. I'm just going to mix this in on the canvas. Okay. Let's play around with it. There we go. And let's dip into a little bit of red. And put it straight on. Mix it on the canvas again. I just want all different shades, different tones. There we go. And let's dip into our red again. A little bit of cobalt blue. We'll make this nice and dark here. Now, the reason I want this nice and dark here is because I'm going putting, I'm putting snow in here shortly. So I want this dark against the light. And the snow will really show up. And basically, a painting is just light and shadow. That's all a painting is. Lots of lights against lots of shadows. And remember, keep it nice, keep the shadows nice and dark. Now, just like that. Now, also remember with painting, uh, you always paint thick over lean and what I mean by that is you always put on your thin layers first and then build it up and put thicker paint on top okay that's one of the rules of oil painting if you do it the other way around it just won't work all right so just bear that in mind thick over thin now that's not too bad now at the moment is it I want to keep this nice light hair coming down onto the board all right now um i want to make this really nice and dark here so i'm going to dip into a little bit of my black okay and you probably have paint's gray but that's fine i just find paint's gray very washed out so i prefer to use black and um a little bit of cadmium red and a little bit of cobalt blue i'm going to make a really nice dark 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 colour down here. Alright. And when I'm doing the snow you'll understand why I put dark here. Really make that snow pop out. Now there we go. Now you can see I've painted over my board completely but that's okay for me because I I'm relatively okay at sketching birds and I know where it is. I can just see the pencil marks. But if you're not that confident, you can just paint around your board if you like, okay? Remember, you can paint it whichever way you like. Now, um, I'm going to move on to, you know, let's see. Sorry, no. I'll take my blender brush, okay? My makeup brush, as I call, like to call it. My wife's makeup brush. She might not be too happy about it, but she has plenty of them. My God, it's like a makeup studio in the bedroom. I don't think she's going to miss one brush. It's only a cheap one anyway. I don't think she'll mind too much. Fair play to her. Now, there we go. Just blend that all together, okay? Make it nice and soft. Now, I hope this is looking okay on the camera. Right, I think we could start painting a robin. 
Now I don't know if this camera is zooming in and out on its own. If it is, I do apologise. My next door neighbour, Tony, is a photographer, very, very good photographer. And um, he said he helped me out with a couple of videos, so maybe I'll take him up on the offer. Let me get some professional videos up online. Yeah? But for now, I'd like to just give this a go on my own, just to see how it turns out. Okay, we're going to move on to this robin here. And this is going to be... This is where we're going to really enjoy it, because... This is going to be very, very free. There's going to be no real details in this. Um, now, first of all, let's take some burnt umber, okay? Now, I've just wet my brush and dried it, just to keep it a little damp, that's all. Help the paint move around a bit better, okay? Just dip into your burnt umber, and up on the head. I'm just going to paint in the top of the head here, okay? And down. On the back here. Now I'm just sketching this roughly just to show the outline of the bird, okay? That's all I'm doing. Now, there's a burnt umber there. Now just get the outline of the bird in and then we can just fill it in, okay? That's it. There we go. In fact, do you know what I'll do? I'll take my detail brush and I'll just roughly sketch the outline of the bird just so you can see a little better, okay? Uh, comes down here and then the belly comes around like that. Okay? I'm going to do a big belly on the board. There we go. And we have two legs coming down like that and a tail. So that's just the basic outline of the robin here and all, right? Right, dip into your burnt umber. And just fill this in, okay? Now, notice what I'm doing here with this brush, okay? To create the feathers. Because these brushes are synthetic, they come to a lovely point. Right? Just flick up. And I'm going in the direction of the feathers, okay? Always go in the direction of what you're painting. And that tells you which way they're going. Now, I'm going to dip into some Naples yellow. And a little bit of burnt umber, just to give this some highlights here. There we go. It's a bit bright. A bit of burnt umber. Ah, there we go. Now, that's it. Just to create this feathered look. That's all it is. Now, I'm cleaning my brush. Just clean that paint off the brush. I'm using the same brush now, okay? And dip directly into cadmium red and cadmium yellow. We want about 50-50 here. Nice orange. Now I know when you think of Robin Red, but you would say it's red, but it's actually more orangey than red. Have a look the next time and you'll see what I mean. Now just fill in the breast here and up here as far as the beak. Alright? Now, the further in we go, I'm going to add cadmium red. Just cadmium red on its own, okay? And I just want to blend that in. There we go. I notice I'm using the brush to create these, to create the direction of the feathers, okay? I'm using this brush, a very flat brush, very handy for this. You see that? Quite nice, isn't it? Now, what I'm going to do is switch to my detail brush, okay, small pointy brush, and I'm going to go into some cadmium yellow and a bit of white. And the reason for that is I want to put a very bright highlight just along the edge here, okay. Just a tiny little highlight. Had the light coming down and catching the front of the robin. You see, and that's all it's about, light and shade. That's amazing, these highlights really bring it to life. You see? Now take your time with this at home. You can pause the video as you go along. 
Okay, I'm just trying to get this done because I don't have much time on this uh, memory card. Only about 40 minutes thereabouts. So I have to get as much as I can in in that time. Alright, I do apologise. There we go. Now I'm going to go into my red. Directly into my red and just put a few flicks here and there, okay? And that's just showing the feathers of the bird coming down. And you can have a bit of fun with this. And play around with it. Now, we have some white here. I'm going to put in white. And just really see it, then you'll see it pop out. Now, I'm just going around here where the beak is going to be. I'm just blending it in. Now, there we go. Okay, um, I'm going to take another brush, another flat brush, okay? The same as the one that we just used, but a clean one. Alright? You see that there? And I'm going to go directly into that white. Just pure white, plenty of paint on your brush, and I'm going to put a little line here, and then I'm going to go around like this, and up, because there's white on the robin just up here, and it tapers off up there. Now you see that effect, that lovely effect, just, just by flicking the brush. That's all it is. Flick the brush downwards, okay? And then it goes around like this, and up like that. Now this is white down here, and I'm going to put some lovely shadow colour in under here in a minute. Now, just take our detail brush, and put a little bit of white on it, and just bring this to a point here, okay? Nice point. We have two curves, just like that. You see? Quite nice. Let's put some flicks of white in here. And the great thing about these oil paints is that it, all these colours are mixing on the canvas. And that really helps with your composition. It really helps tie everything together. All these colours mixing. Different shades. If this was acrylics, this would be quite difficult. Because the colours would be drying very quickly and it would be very difficult to mix them as you're going along. Okay. Now acrylics are great if you're working outdoors and you need to get a painting done rather quickly and you need it to dry quickly, then they're ideal. Um, I painted with acrylics myself for a long time, but I changed to oils. I just find that you can blend a lot better with the oils. They're much more versatile. Now I know they take a bit of time to dry, but if you can get over that, then you really, really will enjoy it. Now I'm putting a little bit of dark bluey purple just underneath here okay because he's in the shade here this is all shadow so i'm taking some blue and some red that's all i'm doing some nice shadow in under here and you can see now all these colors really bounce off each other don't they lovely warm colors there we are and that's quite nice isn't it now, I'm going to go over these feathers here just again, okay? Just to overlap these feathers over that shadow. So I'm going to go directly into my burnt umber again. And same as last time, little flicks, okay? There we go. Little flicks. And then blend it into that white just here. And there we go. You see? That's quite nice, isn't it? That didn't take too long. Now, I'm going to, go, going to go to my medium round brush. It's not a very small detail brush. It's a little bit bigger than the detail brush, just a little. And I'm going to go into my black. Just in directly into the black. Or, my, or the paint's grey, whatever you have. And I'm going to paint in this beak. Now, be very careful with this, you don't want to do the beak too big. Because they have a small beak. They only have a small, small little beak. If you paint it too big, it might look a bit funny, won't it? There you see. And I'm just going to bring that 
brown just down slightly here down to the beak there we go oh that's not bad and then we have the eye the same again dip into our black and we're just painting the eye here and be careful again not to paint the eye too big okay better off paint it small first and then stand back and take a look and see what you think okay now well, you probably can't see this with the light because I have a very bright light overhead here shining down okay so I think actually yeah what I'll do is I'll put something behind the canvas here just to bring it up slightly no, that's a little bit better. Okay, I'm just going to dip into my white again, okay? With my pointy brush. And roll the paint to bring it to a point. Roll your brush around, bring it to a point, And then just put some highlights across the top. I'm going to put one dot just in his eye. And one highlight just across the top of the beak hair. Okay? There we go. Just like that. And then... Down under the eye, I'm taking a little bit of Naples yellow, and again bring it to a point, and I just put a little tiny curve just under the eye here, okay? Just to show that the eye is there, the underneath of the eye. No, that's not too bad. I don't think. We can fill in all these details later, okay? Um, next, I'm just going to take that medium round brush again and dip into some burnt umber and just put in two two little legs here, for just for now. I'll be going over these again in a minute. Okay, but I just want to get these in, just so we know where he is. Now, there we go. Now, I know you're saying where's the tail. I'll put in the tail later, so what I want to do is tackle the snow here first and then put the tail in over the snow because if I put the tail in now and try to paint the snow it'll get quite messy you see right snow now a lot of people see snow they think it's snow and they think white well it's not white all the time on a painting I saw you it needs to be kind of like a nice dark purple Nice purpley blue first, okay? I'm taking some cobalt blue, some cadmium red. Now only a little cadmium red, okay? I want this more bluey and some white. And I'm painting from dark to light. So I'm putting in the shadow first, okay? So I'm gonna paint all this dark. Alright. There we go. Paint it all dark first and I can go in on top of this then with the white afterwards. You see? There we are. A little bit more white, a little bit more blue. And play around with this. There we go. That's a bit better now. And we're going to be using our knife as well in a minute. I'll show you about using the knife to create this lovely texture of snow. And really, you should have a knife in your paint box because palette knives are fantastic you can do lots of different things with them now just fill this in go across the legs if you have to all right there we go no just like that actually i'm going to make it nice and dark just down here at the bottom end okay so I'm dipping into that blue again, a little bit of the black, or the paint's grey, whatever you have, and a tiny bit of red. Just make this a little bit darker here. And even maybe a tiny bit of burnt umber as well. So you can play around with the colours, just add different bits of colours in. Right, so we just basically have a very dark bluey grey here now, right? And then, I'm going to take... I'll take one of my flat brushes, 
give it a clean, one of my small flat brushes. Okay, give it a really good clean. Now, if you find your tops is getting dirty, just change it. It's a good idea to change your tops, say, halfway through a painting, just to keep it nice and clean and keep the colours nice and clean on your palette as well. Now, dip right into your white. Plenty of white on the brush, just load it up with white and just bring flicks of paint down here and there. Okay, just like that. Just play around with the brush, you know, try different things. Don't be afraid of it. Now I know at the beginning you're going to be very careful, you're going to be trying not to make mistakes and trying to get it right, but don't don't be trying too hard to get it right. You, you'll never get it perfect the first time. Okay? In fact, I still learn. With every painting I do, I still learn. I still learn new tricks, new techniques. And that's what I love about it. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do is get my palette knife. Okay? It's my palette knife. You probably have something different at home, but that's, that'll do just fine. And just... Scrape some white off of your palette and just drag it across. That's all you do. Just drag it down. And what I'm actually doing is I'm leaving the canvas take off the paint. The grain of the canvas. It's pulling the paint off for me. Alright. That's all it is. And that just creates a nice texture. So he could be standing on a rock, or it could be just a bit of just the ground covered in snow. It could be whatever you want it to be. Okay. Now, there we go. That's quite nice. So the next thing I want to do is put some shadow in, just behind the robin here. Okay. And, and you really see it come to life. So I'm dipping into my blue and my red, making it more blue and a tiny bit of that black. I want this really dark shadowy colour, okay? And just go in underneath here and paint all this in dark colour. You see? Now you want this really, really, really dark to pop out. So take some of that blue, some of the black and some of the red. There we go. Ah, that's better. I just put that in under the robin. See? And that's the shadow of the robin. See how easy that was? Right, so I'm just going to dip directly into that blue because I want this really blue shadow just underneath the robin here. There we go. Didn't look too bad, did it? Now, just take our knife again with some white and just cut over it here and there. Alright, just like that. Now, we better get the tail in, the tail of the robin. So, what I'm going to do now is just take my flat brush again, my small flat brush. And I'm going to go directly into burnt umber. Okay. Now the tail just flicks out like this and it comes back in. And flick it back in. Just like that. Alright? There we go. And then what I'm gonna do is just take some Naples yellow and a little bit of burnt umber. And just put some little highlights on this. See, I'm just dragging the brush across. And that's creating the feathered look. Very, very, very simple. Now I'm going to take my detail brush, my small detail brush, and I'm going to go into that black, okay? A little bit of turps. And I just want to put in some darks just under the feathers here. Just a little bit of shadow on the feathers. And do the same with the tail, just a little bit here and there. You see? Just a little bit of detail, that's all it is. 
And then I'm going to go into my Naples Jello with a little bit of white and put in some little highlights just here, here and there. No. I'm not going into many detail on this, not too much trouble on this. This is just a quick exercise just to show you how easy it really is and how different colours can bounce off each other. Notice the way the orange, the orangey reds here are bouncing off of the, the pinks and purples and they really help each other on the canvas. And that's, that's what painting is all about. Complementary colours. Okay. And they call them complementary colours because they complement each other on the canvas. That's all it is. Now I'll just put in a little bit of highlight on the legs here. I'm just going to finish the legs, okay? So a little bit of burnt umber and black. And just bring them down like this. And just a couple of flicks here and there. Just to indicate the claws, okay? That's all it is. Because, remember, this is just a kind of a, a general impression. It's not going to be exact. All right. There we go. And then just take a little bit of that maple jello and a little highlight here and there on the claws. That's all it is. All right. I'm just going to finish this claw here. Put a little bit of black. Now, I'm going to just blend this in to the stomach area. And the same with this one. There we go. And then just take a little bit of that shadow colour and just bring it across here. Because these feet will be ca casting a shadow as well. You see? Like that. Now, moving on. Just going to put a little bit of that shadow across here. Because it the tail will cast a little bit of a shadow and just blend it in with your finger. That's all you have to do. We'll come back to this anyway later on, okay? Um, now, what I want to do is bring some branches in across here, okay? So there's going to be some nice branches falling over the board. Just to give it an extra bit of interest, okay? Because the board on its own, it looks a bit, little bit lonely, don't it? So I'm just going to get my medium round brush and dip into that burn tumber, okay? Plenty of tarps, make this nice and thin. Now, just come across here and just wiggle the brush as you go. That's all you have to do. Just wiggle the brush in all different directions. There we go, just like that. Now we'll be using our detail brush in a few minutes. I'm just getting the thicker branches in with this brush first. All right, and we can bring one down here. And this is leading your eye into the painting. That's what it's doing. There you go. Just a couple of flicks here and there. Just wiggle the brush around. Have a bit of fun with it. There we go. And we're going to be putting a little bit of snow on these as well. In a few minutes. And that will really bring it to life. Now I hope you do enjoy these videos. Um, I'm just trying to, I suppose, help the beginners out there. Or anybody who's thinking of uh, starting a bit of oil painting. It, it doesn't even have to be oil painting. It can be acrylics, it can be watercolours. Um, it's just to show people the basics. That's all I'm doing, showing you the basics, how, how to get started. And you can always learn new techniques yourself as you're going along. Okay? I'm just showing you really how easy it is. And don't be afraid. Just get your brushes, pick them up, start painting. And just see what happens. And I'm going to be trying to get a different video every week. Um, this week I just wanted to do a nice robin. Oh yeah, next week, uh, maybe a sunset. I'm open to suggestions. So, 
post a couple of comments there on my page and let me know what you think. We could do a sunset, we could paint maybe Shandon Bells or something like that, I don't mind. So, let me know. And pass all these on to your friends, okay? Pass them all on. We want to, we want to get everybody out there practice, practicing with their paint brushes. We want to get everybody find their sets of paints, and give it a, give it a go. Okay. Now I'm dipping into my white hair, and I'm just putting a little bit of white hair in there, and the, the branches. Okay, or the twigs. Basically, just drag your brush along, and it's just a case of hit and miss here and there. Alright. And all this is doing really this is telling your brain that there's snow on the twigs. It might not look like snow. But when you stand back and look at it you say, yeah there's snow on the twigs. It's just suggesting, that's all it is. I could go through a lot more detail on this. But just for the beginners out there, I just wanted to give you a quick lesson and uh, just a couple of hints and tips here and there, you know. No, that's not looking that's not looking too bad, is it? Okay, I just want to go back to the beak here. I just want to fix this beak. Just give it a little bit of a point, okay? There we go. And all I'm doing now is just going around, just tidying up little bits here and there. Alright. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. But I'm just tidying it up just a little. Now I just want to put a little highlight on his head here where the light is going to be catching it. Alright. Just little highlights just here and there. You see? And then I'm going to go into my white again. And just lighten this up a little bit around here. You see that? And just remember, go in the direction of the feathers. It's amazing what you can do with just a brush, isn't it? Now, I don't think that turned out too badly at all. Right? Now, I just want to make this shadow a little bit more bluey so I'm just dipping into my blue with a tiny tiny bit of red okay I just want to put some real nice blue shadow under here all right there we go that's all I wanted to do and I think we're almost done yeah There we go. And that's not too bad now, I don't think. I'd like to just put a little bit of red just around the beak here, okay? Just a little dark red just around the beak. Yeah. And just a little bit here and there. Just finish it off nicely, that's all. And that's it. A nice robin red breast. Now you don't have to paint the robin red breast, you can paint whatever kind of a bird you like, you can paint a swan. You know, it's up to yourself. Right, I'm just going to bring this up a little bit more here. Alright. Because he's torn slightly. So it'll be so foreshortened. There we go. And that's it. Or lovely Robin Redbreast. The last thing we have to do is sign it. Okay, so I'll dip into my black and I'll come down, uh, let's say, here and just sign it. S. Conway. Who knows? Could be a famous name someday. So, listen, thank you very, very much for watching my video. I hope you try it. Please do. And, uh, give me a like. It's always nice to get a like, isn't it? 
and I turned the camera around so you can see me. Okay, just me. Thank you very much for watching, and goodbye. See you next time.